Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Keeping Up with the Joneses. It's been a long time, and we are now a family of four. And no, we didn't have twins. No. Nope. <laughs> that would have been dope. <laughs> um, we welcomed Everson into the world about three weeks ago. Yep, May 31st. Uh, May 31st, and we are adjusting to parent life. Yes. It's been a journey. interesting. A journey. journey. Both of those things. <laughs> Both of those things. Um, so we wanted to kick back up our YouTube channel to kind of just take you along the journey of things that we've learned along the way. And we'll continue to, it's only been three weeks, so yeah. we're still going to be learning. We're still noobs and we acknowledge that. 100%. But we thought it'd be nice to kind of cater our channel to new parents and like Darnell said, the different things that we've been learning along the way. Um, because they don't teach you a lot of this stuff in the prenatal courses we've learned. <laughs> they don't. Like the prenatal courses are great to keep your baby alive. Yeah. And that's kind of where they that's draw it. the line. Right? I can't say we've used anything from the prenatal no, courses at this so point far. in time. No. So hopefully you guys can learn something from our channel. Exactly. So we're going to be going through things like what our experiences like have been in the hospital. What it was like when we brought him home for the first day, the first week, the first month. The challenges we've had with him. Uh, we'll do product reviews because I found I did a ton of research yes. before we bought a lot of things, and there's a lot of a lot of reviews from like um, publications, but they're kind of basic. And what I would really wanted to see was people who actually use the product, live with the product, paid for the product themselves, yes. and there was very little of that, especially from the perspective of new dads. So yes. we're gonna be posting some of that stuff as well when we get time. Like squeezing this recording <laughs> in has been a, been a challenge. Yeah. So we're going to start with this and we're going to see how it goes. Um, but in this particular episode, we're going to be going through our experience in the yeah. hospital. Labor and delivery. We won't get into any gruesome details or anything like that. We're just going to talk about our experience, how it went, what we wish we did differently, what worked really well. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Let's get it. into it. So I guess, can we say that the hospital we were at? Does yeah, matter? that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we gave birth in the Ajax Pickering Lake Ridge Health Hospital in Ajax. Yep. Uh, we live in the GTA, uh, Greater Toronto area. So this was the closest hospital to us. It's about 15 minutes from our house. Yeah. Um, and it was a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. My water broke on Thursday, I think around three o'clock. Yep. Had no idea my water broke. All good. We ended up going to the hospital to check. Yes. Waited for quite a few hours. Yeah. We waited in the waiting room seeing. for about two hours. Yeah. And I think it's because the way we described what happened and this is again, this is something that maybe you can learn is, I mean, be honest, you know, yeah. if it's, if it's not an emergency, um, don't make it seem as if it's an emergency because there are other people there who yeah. you know, there are new moms who are trying to be served. But if you go in saying, I think my water broke, you probably won't be seen for a long period of time. Correct. So I maybe should have changed that language a bit, but all is good. Yeah. Um, there was multiple times I told Darnell, I'm like, I think we should go home. I don't think it actually broke. Like it's all in my head. And needless to say, my water did break when we saw the OB. Um, and then we were kind of sent home. Not kind of, we were sent, sent home. home. Yeah. Um, they told us, I don't even remember what they told us. So <laughs> like there, there technically was no hospital bed. That, which we didn't know at the time. They didn't tell us that. So the OB was kind of like, go home, um, come back at 3 a.m. Or if your contractions get closer together or stronger or you start bleeding, basically come back immediately. Yeah. And go get some food in the meantime. Because I really wanted McDonald's for whatever reason yeah. when we were at the hospital. So this is probably what I, I would have my first tip, which is yeah. you never really know what they're going to do or what they're going to say. Um, so in our instance, because we thought her water had broken, uh, we brought all our stuff with us. So we we had both of our bags, which were yeah. pre-packed. And we'll do another video of what we brought to the hospital. Sure. Uh, but we had both of our bags packed. We had the cooler packed. We had our baby's sleeping stuff. Packed. Baby's bag. We were right, obviously, the, the car seat just in case they didn't send us home because yeah. uh, we didn't know. Yeah. Um, and so in this instance, we were sent home, which turned out to be a bit of a blessing because, yeah. I mean, if you want to be in those early kind of moments of contractions, it's kind yeah. of better to be at home than in the hospital. For sure. And I was able to eat like a Big Mac, which yeah, we was ate. awesome. Yeah. Um, usually they don't allow you to eat. But yeah, that's your last so, meal. Yeah, this OB was like, go get your McDonald's, enjoy. Um, we weren't home for all that long. We like were home for hours. about two hours, and then my which was just enough time for us to. I had to send a bunch of emails because oh, at this yeah. point I knew I was leaving work for two weeks. So I sent yeah. a bunch of emails. My mom came over to help watch our dog. Yeah. We were able to kind of get everything ready for when we came back a couple of days later. Yes. And another tip, just because your contractions aren't a minute long, it doesn't mean you're not having contractions. So we were timing them at home. 
They're about 45 seconds in length and I think seven to eight minutes apart. But yeah. in the prenatal courses, they tell you they need to be a five minute one long, one. five on one. Five no. one one. Yeah, so that's that's no. <laughs> every um, five minutes. Five minutes, one, one minute, minute in length. Yeah. Mine were 45 seconds long, seven minutes. For one apart. hour, sorry. And at, I think around midnight, I told them, all oh, we need to go back. Like they're getting really strong. They're coming really close together. These yeah. are definitely contractions. I didn't really know what was happening. Yeah. And it gives you so, time to repack your vehicle and get yeah. back to the hospital. So you can kind of take that into consideration. That would have been another 30 minutes for us, right? Yeah. Repack, get in the car. It was midnight. There was no traffic. Driving back to the hospital, park, get inside. All that is about another 30 minutes or so. Yeah. And by the time she got, we got back to the hospital, we were admitted right away. Yeah, we were admitted yeah. right away. And the contractions were very close, very strong. Yeah. I was super lucky. I was able to get the epidural uh, very quickly. That was the only thing I wanted part of uh, my hospital plan. Um, so we got that within 40 So maybe let's take minutes. a step back. Let's take a step back here. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the room. Oh, right? sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the, the, way, the way most hospitals, I believe, will work, and I guess this is tip number three, when you are going back, again, before you know you're admitted, don't bring all your stuff with you. Yes. So we brought a couple of small bags in with us just in case we sent us back home again because that, you know, we you hear stories know. of that. Yeah. Um, that didn't happen. They told us they were going to admit us. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a birthing suite quite yet. I believe we went into the waiting room for a very short period of time. Yeah. It wasn't for very long. Yeah. Once we got into the birthing suite and there's, there's kind of two main rooms, at least in Ontario, there's yeah. the birthing suite and then there's the, like the post delivery Suite. Post no, don't even call it a suite. Uh, room. room, which is going to have some variability to it. So the birthing yeah. suite, they're typically quite large, obviously, because you need room for the nurses, for the OB, um, obviously for the mother, the bassinet, the, bassinet, the partner. Yeah. Um, so our particular room had a nice big hospital bed. Yes. It had all the equipment required to monitor the baby, to monitor yep. Megan. Um, it had the bassinet with the heater on it. And it had its own bathroom, which is great, mainly for me, because once, yeah, and we'll get to the epidural in a second, once yeah. you get the epidural, you can't get up. So I was able to- Oh, big windows too. Big like, window. It's a gorgeous room. Yeah. So if you're there during the day, you'll get some natural sunlight. And then the piece de résistance, as I would say, <laughs> was the fact that the chair that it had uh, was one that could lay out into basically flat. Um, and I'm 6'1", and I was yeah. able to comfortably fit on it, yeah. which was fantastic. Yeah. And we were surprised about, I think, the comfort of the bed because we've heard so many stories about- Beds not being so great for the partner, so I think you're really thankful. I had honestly, for that. you had a good sleep. I had no issues with yeah. it. Um, no, no, no issues with it at all. Like, yeah, because we'll get to the post delivery room and what yes. that was all about. So, yes. if you get one of those, please don't complain to the nurses. Yeah, because it is luxury. It is. So, anyways, once we got there, um, I was able to get the epidural. I think within 45 minutes, it was really, really. Fast. Uh, it was a little longer. We, we, it was it little, felt little, like 45. Yeah, minutes. so we got there around. We long. got there. We got back to the hospital around 12:30, 12:45. Yeah. You were admit, and I was watching the clock. You got the epidural at 2:40. So about. Two oh hours. my god. Okay, it did not feel but, that you know, way. We had it situated. It felt so quick. Hooked up to the equipment yeah. and everything, and changed. Yeah. So it took a little while, but. I would say the epidural process itself was very seamless. They kept saying um, the anesthesiologist was amazing and incredible, and he absolutely was. He made me feel super comfortable. The nurse basically like bear hugged me as I was getting it yep. and just like rubbed my hair. Like she was so lovely. Um, the process of the epidural, I feel like it was less than a minute. It was so quick. Yeah. So from when the anesthesiologist came in and started preparing their equipment to when they actually got it in, got you taped up and everything was yeah. about 10 minutes. Yeah. It, it it's, was it's, so it's pretty quick. quick. And the needle itself is, it doesn't hurt. Just so you guys know, if you're debating an epidural because of pain, um, of the needle, it felt like a little bee sting more than anything. Yeah. So, and I guess yeah. tip on that, if so once you're past, I believe it's eight centimeters dilated, yes. you can't get it. Yeah. And I was close. And I you, was seven we at were that point. Six when we left the hospital initially. Yeah. And seven by this point. Yeah. So the moment you get back to the hospital, um, as long as you know you're dilated, request Just it. Ask for it. We got lucky we got it so fast. Yeah. Because there could be four, five, six, depending on the size of your hospital, other mothers in the similar situation, which is yeah. which was the case for us. But our nurse got us prepped so quickly we jumped the line. Yeah. So it easily could have been another 45 minutes to an hour to two hours, three hours. It could have been and you don't late. really know how you're going to progress. Just make sure you ask for it as soon as you can. Yeah, absolutely. So after the epidural, basically, you they do like an ice test. So they put ice on different parts of your body to make sure the epidural is working. Um, mine worked right away. I think I was numb all the way up to like this area, yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. 
um, and was super comfortable mm -hmm. after that, like could no longer feel, I could feel the contractions, but definitely they weren't intense by any means, almost felt like a flutter um, in the belly kind of thing. Um, and then after that, it was basically a waiting game at that point and just waiting to see um, the contractions basically become closer together um, to become stronger. And yeah. Yeah. And this is the interesting part, right? Like I read a lot on Reddit about kind of what happens, like what's the hospital experience like, especially for the partners. And, yeah. you know, and I'll say specifically for men, because I was kind of looking at the, the male experience. And it's funny you mentioned after the epidural, it's a waiting game. It's true. You just say it around. And it, it'll totally depend on the mother, I believe. Yeah. Like how much discomfort they're in, it, you know, what, what their temperament is. Yeah. Like some mothers might be needier than others and want you to get water or ice or this or that. Yeah. Um, so I would say, you know, for me in particular, like I came prepared to have to kill a lot of time. Yeah. You know, I had games on my phone. I had, um, I brought the Laptop. Nintendo Switch. Yeah. I, I had an iPad with videos just yeah. in case it was going to be, you know, you, they say the average uh, labor time is about 24 hours, 26 right. hours. So I was ready for that. Yeah. But like, it never really reached the point. And you know what? You know what it was? It was because it was at night. Yes. We were tired and exhausted. So that that's night. it. If yeah. you're in the hospital in this kind of stretch post epidural pre kind of active labor. Yeah. During the day, you're probably going to want to bring something to kill time. It, for sure. For both it of is you. a long period of just waiting and seeing totally. what happens. If uh, it's nighttime yeah. though, sleep. Sleep, sleep as if much you can as sleep, you can. You, you sleep. Yeah, even <laughs> as like the birthing parent, like I would highly suggest if you can. I know you're you're anxious and you're excited and you're going through all these feelings, um, but if you can rest, I highly suggest doing so. And I was able to get some sleep in um, when I was like ten centimeters dilated because we'll go into it. But we waited that. a long period of time. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Like because you're hooked up to all this equipment. And yeah. I guess we'll touch on this briefly because it kind of ties into the way you're able to rest. So yeah. you were hooked up to your own monitoring. Yeah. You have heart rate, you have oxygen, you yeah. have, uh, I guess, pulse heart rate. And then the baby, they basically put a bunch of like- It's like mesh. Yeah, yeah the mesh is- A there mesh to, tube top, they call yeah, it. Yeah, so the mesh is basically there to hold on the ultrasound- To the monitors, pads, yeah. yeah. Which is monitoring the baby's And contractions. And, and your contractions. Yeah. And it's all kind of hooked up to this this equipment, which is next to the bed. Yeah. Mm. And, and I don't know how all hospitals do this. I, I imagine this would be pretty common. Yeah, I think it's standard. I'm going to say the his heart rate is like embedded in my head because they can crank up the volume. So all you hear is... Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I found it really personally very anxiety provoking. I couldn't stop looking at the screen. And at one point the nurse was like do you want me to just turn it off or turn it down and i'm like no because i was just so they did eventually turn it down a little very bit. obsessed nice. with it because you're just watching the numbers you're watching your contractions you're watching yeah. your own heart rate um it's not i don't know and mixed emotions about it it made me anxious but then also reassured at the same time it was quite an interesting feeling if you ever had i guess this would be for parents people who have gone through this process before or are currently pregnant Whenever you go to your OB and they do the ultrasound test, it's usually pretty quick, right? Yeah. Um, they put the monitor on, maybe 10, 20 seconds, you the heart rate, they jot it's it down. Yeah, yeah. When you're in the hospital, because it's, it's constant, what you quickly realize is that the baby's heart rate is constantly fluctuating. It's yes. not like, you know, an adult where if you're sitting down, your resting heart rate may be 55 mm -hmm. to 65, but it's not going to 85, 90, 95 unless you have a heart condition, of course. Yeah. But the baby's heart rate is constantly changing. Constantly. And with your contractions, it's always changing exactly. too, it's creating more stress and whatnot for the baby. So it's hard not to watch it and not to panic at times. The good thing, I shouldn't say good thing, the equipment that they had gives the range that they deem to be acceptable and it's very large. Yeah. It's you, you kind of quickly learn that as long as you're within it and it yeah. bounces around a lot, you're okay. But to Megan's point, when you go from 135 consistently for five minutes, you yeah. know, within plus or minus five to 90 or to 100, yeah, even though it's okay, it's hard not to think what's happening. Yeah, right? absolutely. And I guess that brings it into the one experience that we had at the hospital yeah. where the baby's heart rate did drop. So there's something called oxytocin that sometimes they'll offer to give you. Um, looking back i wish i knew more about it but of course when you want the baby out and you want everything to be okay you typically say yeah it's go for to it. accelerate the, labor, the, contractions, the contractions and get things moving a little bit quicker and it worked really well on me 
Um, the problem is my contractions were getting so big and so intense that at one point I was watching the monitor and the baby's heart rate was 140, then 130, then 120. And I think it dropped as low as like 60 at one point. Uh, the great thing, and I will say the OB we had and the nurses we had were absolutely yes. incredible. They ran in right away, addressed the issue, um, and the baby's heart rate went back up within a span of, I wouldn't even say a minute. Like it was really They readjusted quick. the position to, yeah. to alleviate some of the pressure on, on him yeah. um, and his heart rate went back up. So I guess this will lead to another tip, which is do your research on the hospital you're going to give birth at. Yeah. And this is only if you have options. Like for us, where we live, mm -hmm. there's probably three hospitals within 30 minutes. So yeah. if we had heard really bad things about our the closest hospital, we could have opted to find an OB. Yeah, um, like close... Markham Stouffville or somewhere else. Yeah, at another hospital. And we had heard really good things about the yeah. about the OBs and about the nurses at our hospital yeah. from friends of ours who had given birth there. So we kind of had the confidence going in. And to Megan's point, when if something does happen, um, you want to have the confidence that yeah. the nurses and the OBs are going to be able to react to it without putting your baby or your partner, yeah, the birthing risk. mother, at risk. You yeah. know, you hear you hear stories of OBs that are quick to jump to the forceps or the vacuums yeah. And, yeah. and whatever. Um, in this case, the OB was very calm, knew that it was going to be fine. They readjusted yeah. the position. And it was okay. It was okay. Right? Yeah. I was in the frog-like position for many hours, but again, the epidural is amazing in this case. I it. didn't feel it at all. Um, people just had to kind of adjust my leg. So I think we should also acknowledge too, like we had a really good birthing experience and we know that's not the case for everyone. Um, where we feel very fortunate that that was the hardest thing that we did go that through. Was, yeah, that was the worst part. And it was yeah. about five minutes. And it was managed extremely well. And we're very, very thankful um, and blessed for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at this point, we've been at the hospital when because it was 530 when that happens. We've been there about for about five hours. So I'm going to jump over to the, the, the partner experience. Sure. Bring food. Uh, and again, we'll go in another video of the things we brought with us. But for me, yeah. at our hospital, uh, there is one cafe and it's closed on weekends and it closed after six. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and it opens again at I think, probably 9 a.m. Super so convenient. The entire time we would have been there at this point, there would have been no food options. Now, again, I knew that going in, I did my research, going back to my other tip, do your research on the hospital you're going to be giving yeah. birth at. And I brought a ton of food with me. I had food I could warm up in the microwave, which we knew there was going to be one. Um, I had plenty of snacks. I had snacks for her, of course, as well, although she wasn't really able to have much. Yeah, once you have the epidural, you can't, you can't eat. have it. You can just have water. So just water. That's so. why he's talking about food for himself. Yeah, so <laughs> they I could this, not eat. And and they they brought meals for her post delivery, but and I knew yeah. I wasn't going to get anything, so I yeah. came fully fully well prepared. So I had. Um, kind of snacks, a couple of snacks throughout the night, but I did sleep a little bit. Yeah. Then I had, you know, after this, this, the, the incident, I freshened up a little bit in the bathroom that we had, which is, again, was super nice. So good. And everything. And then I was able to make my breakfast, just warm it up in the microwave. Yeah. Um, I was able to, I had brought some energy drinks. So at this point, I want to stay awake. Yeah. Um, so I popped an energy drink so I could kind of stay alert yeah. and, and just kind of, again, settled in for a little bit more waiting. Yeah. And then basically after that, it was just a waiting game. Like we went back to just waiting game. and seeing. And I think there was seven other people on the unit that were also giving birth at the same yeah. time. So it was literally just waiting for my turn for the OB to come in. The nurse pretty much got everything kickstarted yeah. and ready to go. Um, and then I think that was, how long would you say the nurse kind of got things going? So it was around 12 o'clock. Um, where the nurses felt comfortable to get mm -hmm. the contractions back up again. So at this yep. point, like Megan mentioned before, we were on, she was on the oxytocin. We had that spell of, of slow heart rate. They took her off of the oxytocin yep. to let things settle down and let things happen a bit more naturally. That spanned about six hours, six, seven hours. Yep. At that point, they felt confident that the position that she was in wasn't going to be applying pressure to, yep. to him. And they wanted to get things rolling again. And that's when yep. they re reapply the oxytocin Very at the lowest dose. rate they yeah. could yeah. for you know about 30 minute increments and then they kind of continuously increase it until the contractions are really strong again yeah and then once the contractions got strong basically the ob came in um we had a different ob at this point because they do i think it's 12 hour shifts 24 hour shifts or 24 hours. at our hospital they're 24 oh. hours. i didn't yeah. know it was possible <laughs> and I feel like everything's such a blur for me because the epidural i was just like Ugh. pros and cons the, the ob that we had overnight 
um, who is very highly regarded. He's the his best shift, OB in Durham region, apparently. His shift ended at 6 a.m. Yeah. So, you know yeah. what? It's what I've wanted to be giving birth at 5.30 a.m. No. Maybe not. You know, you don't know how fresh he is. He's a good yeah. guy. <laughs> so we, we, the OB we had would have been, I don't know, seven hours onto her shift, eight yeah. hours onto her shift. So yeah. she was nice and fresh. Um, which was good. And she was fantastic. And she was good. Yeah, and she was the younger. She was we really had good. were so good too. And then, yeah, basically, uh, we don't have to get into many details, no. but it was a very quick uh, thirty minutes of pushing him out. Uh, everything there went super well. And then basically, we got to start the journey of parenthood at that point. Yeah. So he came out. You know, you do your your skin to skin immediately. Yeah. Everything gets cleaned up, and yeah. um, you know, they kind of give you your space. The nurses do come in to make sure they do his weight. Yeah. They do all the checks on him. The APGAR. And- which I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> yeah. um, and again, as the partner, your whole role in this is whatever the nurses or doctors tell you to. Yeah. Of course, you do whatever you feel comfortable with. I know some partners get squeamish. Yeah. I don't. So blood and whatever doesn't really bother me. I, I, can I note one thing about that? Sure. So Darnell basically was a nurse in the delivery process, uh, which is so funny. Like they didn't make him put on a hospital gown or anything. No, that was weird. He was no like hair neck, or no gown. Basically like wearing this. I was just wearing regular think, clothes. Sh- sh- track pants and a t-shirt. Yeah. And, and a he backwards had hat. one leg and the nurse had another leg and he was looking at my contractions on the monitor, which to me I thought was, it was so comforting because he was right there with me in the process. Um, and they like fully embraced it. Yeah, they're like, cool. you're like amazing, like cool. being part of it. So that's something I will never forget is that he basically helped deliver the baby. I know he didn't take the baby out, but no, he was very much all the doc, the part over. of the process, which I thought was super cool. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was pretty and I and I got to cut the umbilical cord, which, spoiler, it's kind of squishy. Yeah, like, but people need to hear Well, that. no, no, yeah. it wasn't like, it's not gross or anything like that. Like, it's just not what you'd it's expect. It's different than you thought. Yeah, yeah and they the give you, like, the dullest scissors yeah. known to, like, it's like cray- Crayola scissors, basically. It took Darnell two took, cuts. Took two cuts. Yeah. But I've asked a few other dads, and it was the same for them as well. Yeah. It took two, took two, two uh, <laughs> what do they call it, two bites of the cherry to get it done. If you've done it in one, let us know. But we got it done. We got it cut. Um, yeah. Anyways, skin to skin, cleaned up. Yeah. Uh, they do the measurements, the APGAR test. Yeah. And then as the partner, you eventually also get to do skin to skin. So the important thing yeah. is getting that, that time with the mom first. Yeah. Um, because, you know, breastfeeding and all that stuff, connection. And then once everything's kind of settled down, I got my time with him yeah. later on. He was a bit cold. Yeah. So I got to do the kind of the warm up period yeah. for about an hour or so. And it was good. Yeah. And then basically you, you hang out in the birthing suite. We were lucky and our stay got extended because the postpartum side was extremely booked. busy. Yeah, um, and we didn't mind. We kind of asked our nurse, can we stay here for as long as possible? Just because we knew chances are we'd likely have to go into a shared room and into a very yeah. different kind of space than the one we were in. So yes. we really got to milk um, the birthing suite for as long as possible. So I guess going back to when we did our intake, um, they'll ask you what type of coverage you have insurance coverage you yeah. have and what type of post delivery room you want yeah. we wanted a private room it's uh, we're covered for semi but it's it's a 50 dollars increase at least where we live to pay, to for, pay for the private so like no problem we, we would just do that yeah again it's totally going to be based on availability and because it was so busy that wasn't going to be possible and we kind of hurt i'd heard them talk to someone else about that yeah so i knew it wasn't going to happen so we gave birth at two uh at just before two o'clock yeah and um, we, this is the downside. They, when they need the birthing suite, they need the birthing suite. Right away. Like so you got to get up and go when they say. So we were kind of given a bit of a heads up that we yeah. were going to be booted around, and it was around 12.30 a.m. Yeah, and right that, when we're settling and starting yeah. to sleep and, you know, getting familiar with the baby, our nurse comes in and she's like, guys, I'm sorry, you have to go. So as the partner, like, because I've been given the heads up yeah. that you're going to be booted soon, I'd gotten everything packed up, my stuff, Megan's stuff, um, all the kind of odds and ends that we had floating around the room. And uh, I guess when we talk about the things that we brought, I'll explain to you kind of how I had things divvied up. But yeah. I was ready to go. The downside is we didn't know which room we were going to. They didn't tell us. Yeah. We didn't know if it was a private. We didn't know if it was a semi. We no idea. We didn't know if it was a quad because I think there were quads yes. in our hospital. And when they're ready to take you and the baby and, and the partner, yeah. you're out you go. Yeah. And I guess another thing to note too, because I had the epidural, and had just given birth, of course. Like, I can't do oh, anything. Can't <laughs> I can't walk. So, you know, I also have to get loaded up in a wheelchair. They oh, also have right. to get the baby over. So yeah. it is like 
a pretty intense process to get everything up and out and they didn't get like make us feel really pressured to no, get no 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 they were but totally chill you think about someone that's you know having intense contractions you're like i want to get out to get them in as soon as possible yeah so anyways yeah, we got yeah. packed up and yep. we ended up going to the postpartum suite yep. um we entered the room and realized it was a semi-private so basically what that looks like, you have your two hospital beds and then a curtain between and a shared bathroom. Yeah. Um, when we entered, there was no one on the other side. We were super lucky the whole time no one arrived. So we basically yeah. had a private room, um, but the room was very different from the birthing suite. Yeah. And yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a private room, but you, they tell you you can't use the other bed. You yeah. can't use the other stuff. So like yeah. you're in there by yourself, but you still can only really occupy one half, yeah. uh, which is pretty cramped. And I couldn't use the other bed. Yeah. So basically, if you look at the room, there's a bed. They bring the baby in the bassinet beside the bed. The bed is super comfortable for the birthing, per our birthing person. And then there's a chair in the corner and that chair does not recline. It is like a straight back chair. It's just a chair. It's just a chair. It's just a chair you find yeah. in the waiting room. We that's... asked the nurses if there was a way to get like another Whoa. chair or a cot. And unfortunately it was so busy. Everything was rented out. Um, so we were really lucky as a friend had told us this was their experience in this hospital and they gave us a camping mat. Um, which Darnell was able to use. Not comfortable, oh, but it was something. So this was probably the worst part of I in yeah. my in from yeah. my experience. Like she said, we knew in advance, going back to my earlier tip about do your research, if you know someone who's given birth to the hospital you yeah. want to give birth at, ask, ask questions. Yeah. Because he told us they, they were like two weeks, three weeks before us. So yeah. and like he said, prepare yourself to not have one. Yeah. I had to run back to the car to get it. I didn't have it with me initially. Yeah. Um laid it out on the floor of a hospital. hospital yeah. Not gross. The thing you really want to be doing, but whatever. Yeah. And I probably got about an hour worth of sleep. Mm -hmm. It was the the camp the camping mat was fine, but you know, it's about that thick. The, the it's, a, it's a hard floor, right? Yeah. And I'm a pretty big person. Um I already yeah. don't sleep the greatest. Yeah. So I got about an hour of sleep, got up. I think we sat together for a little bit. Um, yeah. I went to, I think I may have had to do a change overnight of. Yeah, probably. Do a change. And then I told myself, and at this point it's probably like three in the morning, two in the morning. Yeah. I'm like, I'm staying up all night. Yeah. I'm not laying on the ground again. I'm staying up all night. So I'm sitting in a, I'm si I brought the chair over next to the bed, put, put the my feet up, feet up on, on the bed. bed and I'm like, and the lights are off and everything. And I'm like, I'm staying up all night. I made it to about 4 a.m. I was so tired. Yeah. I downloaded Disney Plus in the middle of the night because <laughs> I was like trying to watch a show or something. Just trying to stay oh, awake. Oh my god! And I'm like, I caved and I went back to my floor. Yeah, yeah. I got about two hours, which was which was better than I thought it was yeah. going to be. Which took us to the morning. Yeah, and I wish that was something all hospitals would have is just for you know the partner because. As mom, you're so tired. You've gone through so much. You really need your partner there and you need a well-rested partner 100%. to help, you know, with diaper changes yep. or picking the baby up or yep. changing the baby yep. um, and not having that space for the non-birthing partner to sleep is pretty crappy overall. I like, think I, 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 I struggle with like how they don't realize that, okay, yeah, the mother needs, is, needs to be the most well looked at well the baby first for sure and the mother in the hospital but the moment you leave yeah like it doesn't matter what type of birthing experience you have the mother's sole job is recover and keep the baby alive yeah and as the partner you're doing everything else especially for the first few days even if you have help that's amazing not everyone has yeah. a ton of help yeah. but you're doing all the running around and like yeah. trying to adjust to what life is like at home with no help yeah. and if you had like i had I think five hours of sleep in like a 36 hour period. Yeah. You're just an absolute disaster. You're yeah. a shell of a human. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Give us something to lay on. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> Any, and it's going to be so helpful. We're the family unit. In oh but my gosh. Just, anyways, oh, I think so a really brutal. good takeaway tip is talk to people, yeah. see what their experience was like. Come prepared if you need to bring even like an air mattress, like a single one. A would single air mattress probably would have really went, helped. If I had too. done it again, that's what I would have brought. Single air mattress, bring sheets. And, an air, and like a, and a, um, did I have a, and I had a sleeping bag. 
I had a right. sleeping bag. I had the I, I just laid the sleeping bag on top of it because it was kind of it was really warm in there. Yeah, you had your pillow to give me a little extra padding, and I had my pillow. The pillow was good. Yeah, and we'll um, go into everything we brought because there's yeah. so many different like yeah. tips and tricks there. Yeah. Um, basically, we weren't in the postpartum suite for all that long. So we got there around 12.30, 12.45, and we left in the morning, and we were gone at uh, around 3.30 3 p.m. Yeah, yeah. so it was it. really quick. Basically, on that side, the support is very different. You don't get, like, lots of check-ins. They basically come uh, once every hour to Not check. Even. Not even. Maybe mm-hmm. every couple hours, check yeah. on me, check on baby. Yep. And then the doctor comes in, does a check of the baby, and it's like, do you feel comfortable going home? We said yes. And they're like, okay. They gave us a package of resources. They're like, call for, you know, if you want to do a hearing test or circumcision or breastfeeding breastfeeding um, clinic clinic, and all these different things. Here's your package. Here's the baby's information. Health card, like temporary health card. Temporary health card. Have a good life, basically. <laughs> they check you if you can put them in the car seat, of course. And yeah, then you that's walk it. out of the hospital and... You figure it out at that point. Yeah. And here we are now. And here we are now, yeah. yeah. So it was, you know, if I had to summarize... Because I think we spent... Like, the two of us spent a lot of time on our own doing research. Yeah. Asking people, asking friends. I spent a lot of time on Reddit. Reddit's a great resource yes. for just, like, what to pack, what to expect... Um, I would say plan, plan to be there. And this is, this is probably one of the single best t- tips I got just reading Reddit. Yeah. We were gone within two days, but plan to be there for five. Yeah. And of course, if someone needs to bring you stuff that, you know, that's okay, but come prepared for, you never really know what could happen during the delivery for sure. where they may need to monitor the birthing mother or the baby for an extra couple yeah. of days. Yeah. And if, especially if it's a stressful delivery, you may not want to leave to go get stuff. Yeah. So come with extra sets of clothing. Yeah. You know, and we'll go into that, but just mentally be prepared to be in the hospital for up to five days. Yeah. Um, just in case. Yeah. And no one will say anything about the size of the suitcase you bring. Like, no, you get no, a one massive cares. Suitcase, <laughs> no one cares. They don't care. They don't even look at it. So don't worry yeah. about overpacking. No. Again, we'll do a whole video about that because I think there's so many helpful yeah, there was. Uh, things, things that like, we can yeah. talk about, what we did like bringing and what we never even brought out there's of There's things we didn't use, yeah, but you never know. Yeah. So that's basically our experience with uh, labor and delivery. And as Darnell mentioned, we're going to go into so many different topics on our YouTube channel moving forward. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them below and we'll answer them in the next video. That's it. Thanks everyone for joining us and catching the next one. Peace. Peace.